Hello and welcome. My name is Nate, and today we're talking about Risk 2210. Now, I don't know about you, but personally, Risk has been one of my all-time favorite games since I was a kid. So many evenings, up late at night, playing with my cousins, my siblings, any neighborhood kid I could wrangle, just to play Risk. I just love it. So today, we're going to look at Risk 2210 AD and see how it compares and holds up to the classic game of Risk. Let's begin! As you open the box and look at the board, you see a number of alterations from traditional Risk. The first of which are underwater territories. These territories provide new pathways for your armies to traverse around the world. Making it impossible to effectively turtle up in Australia anymore. As you look closer, you'll see that territory names are different from what you'd expect in traditional risk. Looking through the box, you'll next pull out a map of the moon. That's right, you'll fight not just underwater, but also in space. Space! Next, you'll see the Army Status Report Board. This allows you to keep track of the number of territories that you've conquered. In traditional risk, you count up the number of territories you control and divide by three to decide the number of reinforcements you get at the beginning of your turn. Here, they're clearly laid out for you. As you conquer a territory, you go up a marker, and the person you took the territory from goes down. It also has the section for the moon colonies, and shows how many reinforcements you get for any complete section of the moon, as well as the turn tracker. In Race 2210, you only play for five rounds, each round representing one year. Another new feature is that there are a number of tokens for irradiated territories. Meaning at the beginning of the game, you set aside a number of territories, and those territories are effectively out of the game. Commanders are another new addition. Each faction has the opportunity to recruit five different commanders. A diplomat, a land commander, a water commander, space commander, and a nuclear commander. Each one has their own abilities that they're able to use through a selection of command cards, as well as providing unique bonuses in whatever their area is in conflict while rolling. Another aspect that they added to the game is resource management. At the beginning of each of your turns, not only do you gather your armies as for reinforcements, but you also grab a number of energy tokens. These tokens can be used in hiring commanders, as well as buying and activating command cards. And finally, the last huge addition that they added to the game was instead of having a static turn order, every round you bid on turn order. Everyone will take a number of energy tokens and bid on turn order, and the one who has the highest gets the first pick. And this allows for a bit more variety in tactics. One player who went very last, last round, this round may be first, effectively having one turn right after another. Pros and cons to the game. On the pro side, this addition adds several new dimensions in terms of game, gameplay, and complexity. Each of those is modular, so if you don't like it or don't completely understand how it goes, it really doesn't affect the game that much if you just decide to ignore either the commanders, um, the new territories, or whatnot, and just play with the others until you're more familiar with it. The game provides innovative solutions to common complaints. Everyone always knows that risk takes several hours to do, Limiting it to five turns helps simplify that. And if at the end of five turns you decide you want to keep going for complete domination, go to it. More power to you. And aesthetic. Really knocked out of the park flavor-wise in here. The futuristic sci-fi gaming just is beautiful. From the terms of the sculpted units, the commanders, battling in space or underwater, it just really is fantastic and it really is so immersive in gameplay. And finally, although originally released in 2001, they had a second printing in 2007. I changed the box size a little bit, but left just about everything else, at least similar and comparable. They used cheaper poster board on the um, moon and track inserts. Yeah. Look at that. That's a 2001. That's a lot more solid. On the 2007 one, yeah. 2001, 2007. Yeah. But, <laughs> as long as you're careful with it, it'll do the job just as well. So even though it's over 20 years old, it's still, we still might be able to find it online or at resellers. Cons for it, there are only five factions that have six with traditional risk. 
So I'm sorry, you're a sixth player. We're gonna have to sit out for at least a round. And the added complexity can be a bit of a surprise and a turnoff to people who aren't expecting it. So if you sit down, I highly recommend that you give someone some advance warning if they've never played Risk 2210 AD before. And that's it. All in all, I think this is a very solid title in the franchise of Risk. Highly recommended to every Risk enthusiast. So let me know what you think. What's your favorite version of Risk? Leave your comments down below. And I'll see you next time we wonder, is it worth the risk? Thank you. If this is just an empty box, where's my version of risk? Girls!